Alrighty then, I am putting my new camera to the test for the first time ever making a batch of eggnog also for the first time ever. What an exciting turn of events this is. I don't have a mic connected to me right now, so I don't know how loud or how quiet I should be talking. This will also be testing the mic on my new camera and my ability to make a good eggnog. I hope you guys are all having a fabulous time and I hope that we can continue to have a fabulous time as we talk about random things on this channel. And today's topic evidently is going to be eggnog and lactose allergies. So, yes, I am lactose intolerant, and I have, for very many years now, been making my own ice cream to um, find a way around that. And so, now, I'm going to do the very same thing, but with eggnog, and um, hope that I can perfect an awesome eggnog recipe that is lactose free and I can drink it whenever I want without any of the woes. So, like, ice cream was a whole adventure. I messed around with that for, it was probably close to years back in 2017 that I was really seriously trying to perfect my ice cream recipe. I think I've long since perfected that and I no longer have an issue there. I have thought about doing this with eggnog for a while now, because I really enjoy eggnog, but um, I just never got around to it because I was kind of afraid, honestly, of making eggnog, and I was like, you know, I feel like making eggnog from scratch is going to make me not want to drink it ever again. And so maybe it does that or maybe I get a real good recipe going and I'm not so scared of it anymore. But at any rate, I need six eggs in this eggnog and only one cup of milk, which to me seems very strange. You also might notice that I'm cracking my eggs on the countertop. I know that that is a cooking faux pas, but that is how I was shown at a very young age to crack eggs, and I've just never broken myself of that habit. I think you're supposed to crack them like this, and I wonder if I can do like a cool shot, like bam bam. And I don't even know. I need to, there's almost too much clutter on my new camera now, in that all the wiring and the band from my uh, all the stuff I attached to my camera is now getting in the way of the viewfinder and so if I wanted to flip the viewfinder around so that I could see what I was working with I'd have to move a bunch of stuff out of its way which isn't by any means the end of the world it's just like I was so excited to work with the dang thing and I'm, ex and I'm working with it and now I'm like well daggum I shouldn't have done all these silly things with it because now it's just a big old mess, but um, that's okay. We will live and we will learn, and I will be an expert with this in no time. And so you gotta beat the living heck out of these egg yolks, and you're gonna have to beat the living heck out of the egg whites as well. And then I think you just combine it with the other, rest, with the other ingredients, and it makes eggnog. It sounds pretty straightforward. As I said before, the recipe that my mom gave me does not include cooking the eggs, which is a concern. So what I intend to do to alleviate that is to just um, put the finished product over a low heat and hope that that does well to, um, what's the words I'm looking for here? I hope it does well to cook it enough to where I don't feel so weird about eating it anymore. Um, Cause that was, like I mentioned before, a reason why I was kind of afraid to make my own eggnog. So the eggs are donezo. Let's get 
the um, let's get the mixer over here so I can mix it up. I'm gonna have to grab my phone and get the recipe going too because I don't know um, all of the stuff that I need for this. And if I remember right, the ingredients are pretty simple. I'm a, I think I might add vanilla to mine, and I think I'm gonna call it my own thing. I'm gonna call it Lock Nog instead of Eggnog because I thought that was a pretty creative name. Where did my phone go? Can never find the thing when I need it. Ah, oh, there it is. I always sit it in the strangest, strangest of places too, which doesn't really help. But um, yeah. So let's see. What did she text me? And so yeah, like this is like a family recipe, or that's how I advertise it. My mom wrote down a bunch of recipes in a recipe book back in the 80s, and I love using recipes out of that book because I think that's really cool. So six eggs, boom, we're good. I think that says a half pound of powdered sugar. I don't, honestly, I don't have a scale by which to measure my powdered sugar. So we're just gonna have to play that by ear. Google, here I come. Um, let's think here. Powdered sugar, one pint of whipping cream. What is with these, these measurements? They measure things all weird back in the 80s. One pint. Hey, that's what, this whole thing is one pint, apparently. Well, would you look at that? Um, this is gonna make a lot more food than I thought it was food. This is gonna make a lot more uh, eggnog than I thought it was because there's only one cup of milk in there. And I was like, daggum, like I ain't putting anything in here. I'm using whole milk, lactose-free whole milk. So this won't be the um, lactose-free ingredients to its fullest in that this heavy whipping cream, I've not tried this before, but I think I'm gonna try the um, lactate enzyme pill and put it in the heavy whipping cream next time before I actually make the dish and then see if that allows it to, um, if that allows it to like eliminate the lactate from it. Because that's been like historically my issue with the ice cream is I could not find a substitute for heavy whipping cream. And so the ice cream itself that I make is not as creamy as traditional ice cream is, which doesn't really bother me, but it would still be nice to have like a more, um, a more concrete solution to the problem, if you will. And so that's gonna be the goal that I am gonna have, is I'm gonna get my hand on some of those lactate pills and try and see about having them um, uh, inserted into the heavy whipping cream and see what it does. But for now, I'm just gonna use the regular heavy whipping cream. I consume little enough dairy on a regular basis that drinking this every now and again probably won't mess me up too bad. Um, nutmeg, I think, is that like the core flavor of, um, of eggnog is nutmeg? Thank goodness I had some. I was like, do I even have nutmeg up in here? Um, and then I am gonna put just a teaspoon of vanilla in this. Another thing that I'm thinking about playing around with as I play around with the recipe, I'm gonna make like my own flavors of nog. Like, that sounds super exciting. Um, this is gonna be like what I'm gonna call my standard nog, the lock nog. But like, I don't know, the more and more I do these sorts of like cooking things, the more and more I think that like that might be my future more so than like writing in the traditional sense. But we're gonna dive into that at a later time. All right, so I need to figure out a half pound of powdered sugar. How much powdered sugar is in a half pound? Let's convert that to like cups maybe? How much is a half pound of powdered sugar? Would you look at that, Google? How many cups of powdered sugar are in a pound? There is, whoops, advertisements. Gotta save all them cookies. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Maybe I should invest in a scale so I don't have to do this next time. But 
for now, this is like just me throwing it together. Like all this stuff is just stuff I had at the house anyway. So I was like, let's do it. I have all the ingredients. Let's make it. How many cups are in a two pound bag of powdered sugar? One pound equals three, three and a half to four cups of unsifted powdered sugar. So if we're going to say that one pound is roughly four cups of, um, of powdered sugar, and this recipe is asking for how much powdered sugar? It's asking for a half a pound. So I'm gonna say about two cups. About two cups of powdered sugar. And so beat the egg yolks until light. Add the milk, sugar, and whipping cream. Continue to beat. All right, so we are now going to take our egg yolks and we're gonna throw them in the blender. Blah, 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 blah. Well, no, mixer. This isn't a blender, it's a mixer. And there is a difference. And I'm gonna see if I can move this. I don't think it's gonna do me any good to have it in front of the camera. I would have to elevate the camera, which isn't entirely impossible. Let's do it. Like, we are here to play around with my new camera. That is the goal here. So I'm gonna go get me some books. As a novel writer myself, I have plenty of books to go around. Um, All right, so yeah, I'm gonna take the time to go ahead and try and do this right. I got some nice thick books here. Uh, move over my ingredients. That's gonna move this over here. And then I gotta wash, do a quick wipe down on my hands because I don't wanna get my new precious equipment soiled. But, all right, cool. So let us elevate this bad boy till we get to a solid shot of what's going down in there. All right, so that's gonna be some significant elevation. It's gonna be required. Whoop, 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 don't fall on me. Before I can, oh, the mic port's in the way. All right, well, so, sit you here for now. The books stand, my books are not big enough. All right, let's go get some more books. I'll be right back. But I'm nervous about leaving that thing the way it is. All right, well, we'll be quick. All right, so the goal is to get these darn, um, the goal is to get the camera high enough to where it can look into the mixing bowl and get a cool vantage point there. And it is not there yet. So, we're gonna keep adding books until we get it there. And I know that this probably is not particularly exciting, but hey, I'm recording it from two different angles. So I can show you guys hope that doing this doesn't soil these books because I intend to sell them and oof, it would be a shame to soil a bunch of books that I intend to sell. So let us raise it up to more book levels. Okay. And that's a pretty decent height, but I still feel like it's not great. I can't see really what's in the bowl. Like I wanna get 
I want to be in there. I want to get in there and be a part of the action in this bowl. So let's see if I move the bowl closer. Does that help at all? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. If I move the camera closer, does that help at all? Ooh, a little bit, a little bit. All right, all right. I think that might be the shot that I'm sticking with. Um, yeah, I think that's, I think that's a good angle. At the mixing bowl, you get a nice close up in the mixing bowl. And then we have the wide shot here with the traditional cam. What I've got to do now is figure out how I want to control the mess. I need to maybe get a towel. I put a towel over the So I did all that work and I'm gonna have to reposition the camera anyway because I'm now going to put a towel on top of the books to try and keep the books from getting gross during this whole process. I need to find something that I can elevate this little tripod on that isn't um, books because I would hate to get precious books dirty during the filming of these videos, but I also like I'm excited to get in and get in there and see different angles and get different shots and angles at the um, things that I am doing because I feel like that is going to be a huge money maker. And in a perfect world, I do all of this and it doesn't spill all that much. But I really do feel like. This thing makes quite the mess. All right, let's see here. Let's get them down and dirty. Let's see here. Uh, and I wonder if that's good. Does it bother me that I can't see the thing? I don't think so. All right. Let's start making stuff and let's see how it goes. This will be my first experiment with the new camera and I hope I don't get egg yolk all over you on day one. That would be embarrassing. So I gotta beat the egg yolk or mix it or whatever they call it. Which direction does it wanna go? It wants to go this way. Lopsided. I don't think it's sitting on the turntable right. There, that might be better. Oh, yep, that's better. I'm gonna slow it down with my hand just to keep it under better control. Alright. So, I think that's enough. I whipped it before I put it in here, and I whipped it. Um, just then, on the machine thing, it says beat the egg yolks until light. Add milk and sugar and whipping cream and then what does it say? Continue to beat. All right, so I'm gonna start this and then I need to add the milk and then I need to add the whipping cream and then I need to add the powdered sugar. All right, sounds good. Nice thing about this heavy whipping cream is I bought one pint, and so I don't have to measure it at all. And it is nice because I bought one pint and I only thought I was gonna need like one teaspoon, so it's nice to actually use the whole thing of heavy whipping cream for once instead of letting it go to waste. So I'll pour that in first. really excited. 
excited to see how this looks when I get it on the I'm very excited to see how this looks once I get my camera doing its thing. Um, all right, so now I need to add the one cup of whole milk. Get that bad boy up in here. Let me get a cup of this. And then pour it in there. Do it nice and good. Whoa, getting a little excited with my milk there. And pour it in there. I would think that was supposed to be blending while I did it, but we'll just blend it again. We'll blend it again. All right, blender, blender, blender. Mix it up real nice and good. It's like doing this weird kind of lopsided rotation. It doesn't have a healthy rotation to it. Makes me feel like I'm doing, I done did something wrong. But all right, that looks not like eggnog at all. All right, now I need to put the sugar in there. So it says sugar, whipping cream, continue to beat, beat egg whites, add to mixture until thick. If desired, add rum. It doesn't say anything about adding nutmeg, but I'm sure we'll get there. All right. So now I need to add the sugar. Before I add the sugar, I'm gonna add the vanilla because it seems like we're adding a lot of liquid ingredients right now. So let's go ahead and knock out the vanilla while we're adding our liquids. Um, but, 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 uh, where are you at, vanilla? Girl, come here. All right, vanilla. I need more vanilla, I'm nearing empty. Vanilla. All right. Now we're really looking at something. Let's get some more blending power up in here. All right, now it's starting to splash a little bit, so I need to be careful with it, because I would hate to dirty up my camera but I think I got a pretty cool angle on it. All right, so now we're gonna add our sugar, which we need two cups of sugar. And then after that, I'm going to add the egg whites. And then um, I just add a crap ton of um, nutmeg, I guess. And then from there, so this is where it gets sketchy because powdered sugar has an awful tendency to just get on everything all over the place everywhere and that would be me the guy who just bought a brand new camera and gets it covered in powdered sugar because he used the brand new camera to film cooking stuff um, but you know like gonna have to it's gonna have to get dirty eventually it can't stay nice and pristine forever but it would be nice if it stayed nice and pristine at least for a day because I literally just bought it today and so if it got all covered in egg yolk and um, powdered sugar today that'd be not so cool but we will figure it out honestly with it having six eggs in it, well, I guess it doesn't have the egg whites in it yet. I was gonna say, honestly, with it having six eggs in it, it's more liquidy than I anticipated it being, but that is because it, um, that is because I haven't added the egg whites yet. Right now it just has the yolk. And so I guess it makes somewhat sense that it's being that way because it doesn't actually have six eggs in it. It's got however many eggs, six eggs yolks turn out to be. But all right, we got ourselves two cups of powdered sugar, which um, is supposed to be half a pound. So hopefully Google did not steer me wrong on that one. Gonna do a controlled blending so as not to make too much of a mess, but 
still to get a cool shot going. You have to scrape the sides on this one because the um, powdered sugar looks to be planted on the game. And that's okay. Powdered sugar does that. Alright, I'm gonna have to stop it and scrape it, and I got a big old clump here that's just doing its own thing. It's like, I'm gonna sit here and be a clump, and I'm not gonna stop being a clump until you treat me like something better than a clump. And, well, if you treat it better than a clump, I'm just going to de-clump it. De-clump it? That has, like, been the bane of my existence with, um... Adding dry ingredients to wet ingredients. I have such a clumping issue, it's not even funny. And like it always clumps, and then I've got to try and figure out how to break the clumps up, and to keep it from being clumpy, and I'm just, I feel like every chef has something that is like the thing that they have to deal with, and mine is clumps. Anytime I'm adding anything dry, anything wet, it always gets all clumpy and gross, and I just don't much care for having to do that. Okay, so the um, mixture looks pretty well mixed at this point. I think it is time that we went ahead and added the egg whites. And at some point in time, I need to add the, the nutmeg as well. And um, so I need to figure out, I just got a text from somebody. Let's see what they want. I need to figure out how much nutmeg I'm gonna put in this thing. It doesn't have a measurement, it just says nutmeg. And so that's awesome opossum. Um, let's see. Oh, you're right. I, mean, I told somebody I was going to give them this recipe, and I did not give it to them. Um, I can do that. I just need to dig it up real quick, which shouldn't take too long. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. All right. Nutmeg. Honestly, I'll probably just add nutmeg taste, because that's how I roll. And, oh, and then the recipe didn't actually tell me how much. That's also important. Let's see here. Nutmeg. All right, let's just add, oh, let's do the nutmeg last. Let's do the egg whites, get that in there. And then we can add the, um, the nutmeg. And let's see what this does to our concoction. So far, I don't know that I want to drink this, if I'm being honest with you guys. It seems kind of gross. And that was always my concern with making eggnog, is I was like, you know, I don't know how I feel about drinking this. And it's definitely nice and thick like eggnog now. Let's get that nutmeg in there. Oh, come on, you can nutmeg better than that. I want nutmeg up in here. I want it to be the nutmegiest nutmeg drink you've ever nutmegged. So let's, let's, there's gotta be a better way to do this. Ah, there's a big old clump in the way. What was I saying about clumps being the bane of my existence? Cause here they are again, getting in my way. I got a big old clump of nutmeg just chilling out, being in the way. Let's see what it does here. Fam, what do you think? Is that enough nutmeg? Or do we need more? I'm thinking it needs more nutmeg. More nutmeg, says the fam. Let's do some more nutmeg. And the problem is, is like I can't taste this until after I put it under the heat, at least a little bit. And so I'm just gonna drown it in nutmeg until I think that there's enough nutmeg in here. So when you can't use your good old taste sensors, let's use our nose. Does it smell nutmeggy? 
I'm not really getting a strong scent of nothing out of this. Hmm. Let's do one more round of nutmeg. What do you guys think? One more round of nutmeg is gonna get me there. Gonna put some more nutmeg in my eggnog till it's square. Yeah. Clump's in the way. Clump's in the way. Clump is always in the way. Gotta find a way to get it out of there. Clumpy, 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 clumpy. Nutmeg. I made that song up, by the way. And I don't even know what to call it. I guess I'll call it Clumpy Nutmeg. That actually sounds like a pretty decent band name. All right, this is gonna be the last round of nutmeg, I promise. No more nutmeg after this. I'm gonna be done with more nutmeg after this. All right, so I'm gonna say that it is as good as it's gonna get for now. Let those little beaters do their thing. I'm gonna double check my camera angle, see how that looks. Ooh, look at that. Looks gorgeous. I love my new camera already and I've only done one video with it. Let us, um, I'm sorry, I got old camera doing still cam over there and I'm gloating over the new camera and it's probably like, why do you hate me? What did I ever do wrong? All right. Ooh, let's move this off of there. It's tough to do. Ooh, there's stuff in here. Oh, there we go. I got it. All right, cool. So I'm gonna set this aside. And Ooh. get this beater going and do a hand job with it. Well, that didn't come out right. I'm going to hand mix it now but I need to make sure that I'm still in frame, which I am. I need to figure out what I'm gonna do about that viewfinder, because not being able to turn it around is a big old pain in the patootie. All right. I mean, it's starting to look like eggnog, if I'm being honest with you guys. I could be like a nog chef. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be the king of nog, and I'm gonna come up with all these different eggnog flavors, and I'm gonna sell them to the highest bidder for a good recipe of nog. And like, all of my nog is completely homemade, and that is gonna be my selling point. And I will just become the creator of nog, and the whole world will know me as Lock Nog instead of all these other creative adventures that I've gone on. The eggnog is the one that will be the king. All right, so I think that is blended up pretty darn well. So what I am going to do, just for the sake of my own know-how, I'm gonna put this on a low heat for a very small period of time and see what it does. I'm hoping that we don't get scrambled eggs out of this and that it just gives me the peace of mind that it was cooked and is no longer raw. So I'm gonna cut this recording and find a new cool angle to record at. I'll see you all in a couple of seconds. Ooh, looky there. Hey, there's all my nutmeg. Sitting there at the bottom of the bowl. All right. Let us, like I said, we're gonna put it on a very low heat. We're gonna be very nice to it. I do not want to anger it and turn it into, um, I guess I'll just do that. Do not want to anger it and turn it into scrambled eggs. I want to cook it enough to where it feels like I did my due diligence in cooking the egg. I need to figure out where I'm gonna put this. I don't have like a pitcher. Oh, I had a whole bunch of milk jugs. I still do have a whole bunch of milk jugs. I could put it in a milk jug. I hmm, should probably think about this. How am I gonna store my homemade eggnog? I need a pitcher. Um, I have this measuring cup that can hold four cups of liquid, but it doesn't have a lid on it. Um, interesting. That will be a problem for future Lachlan. Present tense Lachlan needs to make sure that he cooks his eggnog a healthy amount to where when he drinks it, he doesn't feel 
like he's drinking raw egg. But like honestly, people eat like sunny side up eggs all the time. That's one of the most popular ways to drink or to, to drink eggs, to eat eggs. And like obviously they don't get all sick and gross from that. So I'm thinking that um what was it? Where are they I'm thinking that it's not really that bad, but it's just like for peace of mind's sake, I'm going to cook it. Hey! <laughs> so I found a um here let me show this camera. I found a pitcher and it had some Kool-Aid in it. So one of these days I should make myself some Kool-Aid. The gifts that my parents gave me on when I was moving out just keep on giving. Um, there was a can of soup, chicken noodle soup that my dad gave me when I moved out. And I was just like, okay, cool, thanks for the soup. And then I was sick and I needed something to eat and I heated up that can of soup and it was wonderful. So thanks for the soup, Dad, I appreciate it. And whomever packed my pitcher full of Kool-Aid, which sounds like Dad as well, honestly. So I will be having some Kool-Aid after I store some eggnog in this here pitcher. And so I'm just trying to whisk it constantly because it makes me feel better. And I don't want to um, accidentally have it like clump up on me or something. And I don't honestly know for how long I'm going to keep this on the heat for. This is um, a very low heat. Like the pot itself does not feel hot at all. So I'm going to say that it's going to be a while before it's hot enough for me to have any kind of peace of mind. But honestly, like right now, it seems pretty drinkable. Like I could see myself drinking a small glass of this. Um, that's the other thing. All my small, so all my small glasses are um, dirty because I've been having milk and Oreos every night, and so I blow through my small glasses very quickly, which is unfortunate. <laughs> but um, yeah, I uh, I'll just clean a glass or something. I'll find something to drink this out of. That will not stop me from enjoying my eggnog. Though it is still very strange, having watched it all come together, that this is something that like people drink. Like, who in their right mind made this? I'm gonna have to research the origins of eggnog if I am to become the eggnog master as I've advertised myself to be. And so like that is going, you guys are seeing it firsthand, the start of my eggnog career. This is the first batch of lock nog, and this will become my standard nog. And then I will be the king of nog moving forward. And I will have pumpkin spice nog, and I'll have nog nog, and I'll have Charmander nog, because I have to put Pokemon in everything that I do. And so, yeah, maybe that's what I will do. I keep talking about um, like starting a restaurant or a business or a cafe, and like maybe I'll just do all of the things that I've ever thought about doing just all in one. I feel like the place that I live could use like a hangout zone for the youth in this community. And so I thought about opening up like a hangout zone. And then I was like, I could serve food in the hangout zone. And like, how legit would that be if you could like go to the hangout zone and get like a legitimate meal? And then like, I'll also have nog of every kind of variety that you can imagine. Ooh, I wanna do a banana nog really badly all of a sudden. So anyway, yes, this will be part of my future endeavors. And I just need to figure out how to make a business out of being the master of eggnog. Like, surely there's enough people in the world that like eggnog to be like, bro, I wanna try every flavor of eggnog you've ever made. And I'll be like, all right, let's go, let's try them. I make all these flavors just for you, man. Um, the pot still does not feel hot at all. So I'm gonna let it sit and rest for a little bit because I'm tired of stirring it. But at some point in time, I'm going to hope that it is hot enough that I don't, that I feel like it's actually cooking. Cause right now I don't feel like it's cooking.
And I wonder if the burner is even hot. Like, I'm trying to see if there's any heat on the burner at all. And I don't, I'm not feeling any heat there. I don't think it's on. Oh, now it's now it's doing something. See that? It's turning red. Did you see it turn red? I um, had it on very low. I'm just, like I said, I'm really skittish about accidentally making scrambled eggs here. So I don't. I really don't want to boil it. I don't want to bring it to a boil. That's typically my my tried and true with any liquid. If you want to combine it to the best of its ability, then you put it on. Uh, you put it till a boil, and you know you've got a strong liquid ingredient on your hands. But I don't want to do that. And like I said, I'm just leery with the fact that I've got six eggs in here that it's gonna create something that I don't want it to create. So I'm gonna just heat it up and do a very light cooking. And like, I can heat up store-bought eggnog and it heats up just fine and it doesn't miraculously turn into scrambled eggs. So I might be fine and I might just be overreacting, but I would rather be safe than sorry and make sure that I've got all my ducks in a row here. And like the other thing that I'm worried about, like these, the, the videos that are coming off of my camera look amazing. And I'm worried that after I put it through my, um, my good old editing software that it won't look so amazing. I'm going to turn off the lights. I wonder how that would look. Oops, that's more light. Let's do less light. How does it look under less light? That is not enough light, but I might have a solution to that too. Ooh, that's pretty nice. I like that. I think that's a good shot. I've got all these neato little gizmos and gadgets to help enhance my recording. Somebody just texted my work phone. That's always fun. Wonder what they want. It's never good to get a work text on the weekend. Somebody either called out or needs to do something. Nope, it's a junk text. Some politician wants me to vote for them. Whatever, no thanks. I'll vote for you tomorrow. Right now, I'm making eggnog. Uh, I'm making eggnog. It's really good nog. Yeah. I'm gonna be the master of nog. I'm gonna be the master of nog. Like no one ever nog. Boom, 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 boom. All right, I'm done singing to you guys. I know you probably don't like it. Um, I like it though. I really think this is a cool shot, but I also feel like my lighting has gone down since we first started this. Maybe I'm imagining it? I feel like this little light that I use doesn't stay awesome all the time. I feel like it doesn't stay awesome all the time. That's all I gotta say about that. But I'm also kind of cooking in a dark environment. Like I still feel like the shot itself looks really cool. Look at that. It's starting to do something. So I might, I might call it here. Is it getting hot? Pot still doesn't feel that hot, that hot though. But it's starting to get, I feel like more, more thick. Is that how I want to describe it? Ooh, look at that. Mo thick. I don't know. Y'all have to tell me if this is like a bad... I was really excited about this. I need to get a better light. Everybody and their grandma has them daggum ring lights. And I was like, I'm not gonna be one of those people. I'm not gonna get a ring light. I'm gonna get my own kind of light. And now I'm sitting here like, maybe I should have got my own kind of light. Because I feel like this ain't doing it. I feel like it's still kind of dark. Like if I turn it off, it's definitely dark. If I turn it on... It's not so bad. It's not, um, I still am trying to figure out if I prefer it with this light or if I prefer it with my overhead lights. They say that's a big part of filming is lighting. And if you can be in control of your lighting, then you've got a good thing going for you. The other thing is I don't know that the camera right now is um, blurring out everything that it's not supposed to be focusing on. 
And is that wide? Is it off? I really like that cinematic view of where it controls where people's eyes go. And I think this honestly might be a better lighting option than what I was doing. But I guess it probably all depends on the mood you're trying to set. If I wanted it to be like a dark and gloomy eggnog setting, then that previous adventure probably would have gotten me where I was going. But this is supposed to be exciting. This is the start of my eggnog career. Doo da, doo da. All right, the pot's getting warm now. I'm feeling a little bit better that we have started to actually cook the egg and that it's not just um, raw egg mixed in here anymore. And like I said, once again, people eat sunny side up eggs all the time and that's not frowned upon. So I think we're okay to do this, but I might make this and everybody be like, oh my gosh, you done poisoned your sale. Like, well, the best daggum poison I ever did taste. Need to get a hold of, yeah, so remember, I did not use the lactate enzymes on this, so this is not proper lactose-free eggnog. I will be feeling the effects of this later. I did use lactose-free milk, which I always have on tap, but I did not use, um, well, lactose-free, I can't find lactose-free heavy cream, but I was gonna add the lactate pills to the heavy cream before making this to see if it alleviated the discomfort, but I didn't have any of that stuff handy. I usually just buy the pre-made stuff. But this is a new adventure. How cool would it be? I should patent this. I am getting all sorts of ideological about my stuff. But like, I, need, I feel like this is a pretty good idea. People from a business standpoint always say like, if you want to try and be a successful business person, you have to problem solve a problem. What problem and I am I solving with this? Well, the problem I'm solving with this is all those poor people out there who can't have eggnog because it bothers their tum-tums can now have this eggnog and it won't bother their tum-tums. And I feel like that is a pretty important problem that needs to be solved. So I'm about to go make up this recipe turn it into a thing, get it patented, and then make a milk carton and make sure it's made of recyclable or global materials. And I'm gonna start an eggnog company. Maybe I should take it on um, that show. Do, do they still do that show where the people come on and the rich people decide whether or not they can make the thing that they wanna make? Um, Shark Tank, do they still do that? Is that still a thing? Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll patent the recipe, and then I will, um, I will take it to Shark Tank, and I'll have like three flavors. Then I should have like the the Lock Nog, the original, and then I should have like the Charmander Nog, which will be all cinnamony and spicy, and then Banana Nog because I apparently decided that Banana Nog needs to be a thing. And then I will take it to them, and they'll taste it. They'll be like, dang, this is really good. And I'll be like, I know, right? And then they'll be like, what's in this? And I'll be like, a whole bunch of stuff. Like, that. don't mind yourself with that. Just tell me that it's good and that you want to help me patent it. And then, yeah. And then I'll just be on my way to superstardom. And I always think about these wild things, like wild things to quit your job for. Could you imagine going to work and telling your boss, like, yeah, I'm going to quit because I just patented, like, this awesome eggnog that the whole world is now gonna just like start consuming in grocery stores and such. So see ya. Like that would be an awesome way to um, to do that. So here I am talking about patenting my recipe and I just shared it with all of you guys. So now someone else is gonna be like, that's a good idea, I'm gonna do that. And then they're gonna beat me to the punch and then I will be out of, out of the glory but that's okay. It happens, it comes and it goes. And this 
eggnog. I don't think it's gonna turn into scrambled eggs. I still don't think I'm going to boil it because I'm afraid of how that might change the texture. The pot's getting warm. The eggnog itself feels kind of warm. So, how long have we been filming for? 17 minutes. I feel like the last one was like uh, half an hour. So like all in all, this is gonna be a long video just making some eggnog. I'm gonna have to like, if I'm gonna patent this, I'm gonna have to get to a point where I'm not making it by hand because I can't be spending half an hour, 45 minutes every day making eggnog. And this is just one batch. Like this is gonna be in theory, one carton of eggnog. I still gotta make other cartons for the rest of the world. It's starting to be like Santa Claus and just make the whole world's eggnog in one night and then tell them, sorry, you can't have any more eggnog. That's another thing, like, I could make eggnog and like have traditional eggnog only come out during the holidays, but then regular or whatever other kinds of nog that I create comes out throughout the year, like, because eggnog's a holiday thing and I'm fine with that. So the traditional lock nog that I'm making right here will come out around the holidays and then the rest of the eggnog will be available throughout the year. And that's the thing is like, I don't know if I should try and go like the grocery shop route and do mass supply distribution of this eggnog, or should I go the route of um, like a private distributor and just like open up a store front and be like, hey, this is my cafe where I serve various kinds of eggnog and I would still like bottle it and sell it by the half gallon or whatever. But um, yeah, that could be really cool. I wonder how one goes about getting like a blank carton of milk. Like obviously I don't wanna put this in a recycled carton. People would be like, wow, that's really cheap looking. So I gotta find a way to get like a blank carton and then carton all this milk into it and then seal it up and keep it good and yeah, I don't know. Both ideas seem awesome. I don't know which idea seems more awesome. Like, am I more keen on the idea of opening up a storefront and making it like the nog log and just like serving up not eggnog for the rest of eternity? Or do I want to um, distribute it on a mass scale? Or maybe I start with the storefront and it evolves into something bigger. That could be like the Starbucks of eggnog. That would be cool. This is like, this is some high level, high concept stuff. And if I have any fans out there who take this idea and run with it, I'm gonna be very upset with you because I like this idea too. Um, feels warm. Let's see, what are we at? 20 minutes now? Let me stir this up and keep it going for another minute maybe, and then call it. Like I'm just talking, business planning, and stirring up eggnog. I've been doing that for a good while now. I think, um, I think, I wish I had an extra set of hands, but I think we're good. Like I said, I feel like I have peace of mind enough that it cooked enough to be like, not gross. Um, I cooked it on a very low heat for a very short period of time. And like I said, people drink sunny side up eggs all the time and they don't get sick. And I feel like that's just what this is, sunny side eggs. But I've cooked it a little bit. I put it to heat. I've heated it up. And it has not made eggs yet. Um, it's not bubbling or boiling either. Because I feel like that's where I would run into my issues. Is if I put it to a boil, then it'll be like, bro, no way, Jose. Or am I going to do that? And like whisking it constantly probably helps because it's not going to turn into a yucko thing if it's constantly getting beaten to a liquid and so that's really nice i am getting all excited about my eggnog escapades right now and so that's that this 
is how it starts. This one innocent little video, and then I'm gonna become the eggnog capital of the world. It's gonna be, it's, I'm gonna put my little town on the map because of the eggnog cafe that I have started. And we'll serve food too because everyone wants to go somewhere and get food and eggnog. Like that's a weird combination, but not weird now, cause I'm gonna make it normal. All right, how's that pot feel? Pot feels pretty hot at this point. Um, how long have we been recording? Oh, I put it on for another two minutes. I was only supposed to run out the extra minute. It doesn't help that I'm like doing all this talking either. So, let us finish out this minute and then take it off, the heat. And I'm gonna drink it. And if I get sick next week, you guys will hear about it and you'll know that my eggnog was not properly prepared. But I feel like this is safe for consumption at this point. I've heated it up pretty thoroughly. Like the pot feels very hot. Part of me wants to let it come to a boil just to see what happens to it. But I don't want to ruin it. I want to be able to drink this, darn it. Maybe I'll let it come to like a bubbling. Like a slight bubbly, not quite boil. And it'll be a very slow boil. And that'll kill any germites that are still hanging around. And then we'll be doing good work then. We're gonna have a good time then. Full of song references. Ugh, I am just dreaming about my eggnog adventure now. And I don't even know how to make it a reality. But, like, with my passion for cooking, I've kind of thought about this a lot lately. Like, I write fiction, and that's cool. But if I could be a famous chef, that's much more practical, at least. This pot's feeling pretty stinking hot right now. Um, I need to watch what I'm doing. I don't think I got any nog on my books, but I'm using books as a stand for my camera, as I've been doing. And um, these are all books that are supposed to be for sale, so I need to stop flinging eggnog all over the place. Guys like that sound? The sound of stirring eggnog? Whisking eggnog, perhaps? All right. Well, I feel like I've just about had it with this. And I keep saying that, and then I keep letting it cook, and I keep talking to you guys, but um, I do think I've had it with the eggnog at this point. And yes. It isn't quite bubbling. Let me look at my other camera real quick. I haven't checked on the old cam cam. And a while, the wide cam, the widespread camera, it can see the other camera. So I've got like camera inception going on. You can see one camera through the other camera, through the other camera, through that camera. Yeah, this definitely is hot now. It's starting to bubble. See little bubbles forming? Oops, somebody texted me. I'm gonna check my phone again. I'll leave this alone for a little bit. Can you see it swirling around? Oh, you really can. Gosh, I love that camera. All right, let's see here. What's this thing want? Oh, now they want to talk to me. All right, well, I think I'm gonna call it. I got some friends that I was trying to talk to earlier that want to talk to me now. So I'll go see 
that's what they got going on. Thank you all for watching me make eggnog, lock nog as I'm going to affectionately call it, and I hope to talk to you all soon. Thanks for listening to my crazy weird business plans, but I'm like seriously considering making that a reality, so wouldn't that be cool? All right, y'all, have a good rest of your Sunday, have a good rest of your weekend, have a good rest of whatever day it is you're seeing this. Go get you some eggnog if you haven't already. If you're one of those people who are nice enough to be able to um, enjoy eggnog without it happen to be a special lactate brand, then you do that. And if you want to try the special lactate brand that I'm making, keep your eyes peeled. It's coming to a store near you.